My goodness, it's been a long time since we sewed anything. I'll put a little picture up in the corner. Uh, this is going to be a little uh, short jacket for a third scale uh, BJD girl. And I have some new colored um, faux leather that I thought, I just need to make a jacket out of this. And someone had saved me some scraps. And it's fun because they'll have these really tiny little scraps and they're thinking why would you want these small pieces and, and in my head I'm thinking well I have something to make that takes a lot of little pieces so we'll go over these and then we'll go ahead and put this jacket together and I will put the pattern on the website in case you'd like to try it as well so let's see we'll start out with the the pink pieces I suppose so this is the front of the jacket and then there is the side front that will be attached to the edge here that will create the front of the jacket. Then we have, where's the other one? There we go. Then we have the back of the jacket, which is actually a four piece back. So we have the center uh, of the back, and then we have the sides that go together this way and then we have a yoke that goes across the top and for this jacket I just thought it was fun I'm gonna do the yoke in white the collar in white and the sleeves in white and then the rest of the pieces are the pink color so this is the back and how it will be put together I have already notched the center back on the top and bottom of the yoke the top and bottom center back notches on the back center back piece as well as on the collar just to make it easier to put those pieces together and to line them up so this is obviously the collar which will go on the top here and then I have the sleeves and cuffs on the sleeves and I debated about making the cuffs a different color but I decided no I'll go ahead and keep those the same color I don't know what rhyme or reason I used I just thought we'll throw this together <laughs> and then we have the front facing pieces which will go inside the front of the jacket when we attach the collar and then the waist band that goes around the hemline of the jacket will be put on after we have the front facing in place so uh, the first part I'm going to do let's see here is <laughs> let's see we gotta decide on our order here I will put the color pieces together with right sides together and sew around the top edge. I'll trim the seam allowance. Then I'll flip it right side out and just base the bottom edge together, making sure my notches match just so that my pieces line up well. And then the back will put the sides together. And once the sides are in place, then we'll go ahead and put on the yoke and then I'm going to be top stitching a lot of these seams so we'll get the back put together the collar ready and then we'll get the side fronts put together and uh, these pieces I usually like to start at the hemline so I'll start here at the hem and I'll go up to the first little dot which is on the pattern piece and then once I have there then I can kind of pivot my uh, materials around my needle as I sew and bring these pieces together so this may end up being a little bit longer than this edge which is fine because once I put it together I'll trim whatever is on the top that sticks out a little bit too much so that's why I start at the hem on both pieces so that both are sewn the same way so anyway that's what we'll do to get started just a quick little note when you're sewing things together that are at an angle like these pieces are one thing to take into account is when you line them up you don't want to line up the tips of the fabric so when you're lining these up if you line up the tips you'll find out what happens is your seam will be a quarter inch in for a seam allowance but you can tell like right here 
if you sew that, those edges are not going to meet. There's going to be a gap here. The same thing will happen up here where the seam is that doesn't meet. So when you're sewing at an angle, what you want to do is envision where that actual seam allowance will meet on each side. For example, if I have a quarter inch seam allowance on this piece, it would be about here. And let's see if these marks show up. Oh, I think they do. Okay. So when you line up your pieces, you want to line up so that where the seam allowance touches the end, that's where the fabric actually matches. So for example, now, and I'm trying to look in my, my camera at the same time here. <laughs> so now, as you can see, there's a slight overlap of pink right here. That's because where the pieces actually meet is right here where the seam, alliance, seam allowance is. So that way when I start sewing, my needle seam allowance is going to be at the very edge of the fabric. And if I follow that down, I can tell at a quarter inch here, this is also where my seam allowance would be so that that's where my fabric will match. Then once it's sewn and you open it up, your edge is going to be flush. If you line up the pieces according just to the tip of the fabric and sew that seam allowance, your pieces are not going to match up flush. Let's see if we can get that to show in my camera. I don't know if it will show very well because it's not sewn yet. <laughs> Let's try it again here. Okay, if we line up the tip and then we fold it, can you see the difference there? Let's see if I, my finger will be enough of a backdrop. They, they don't end up flush. There you go. There you can see that little corner, how it sticks up. That's what will happen if you try to line up the actual corner of the fabric. So when they're at an angle, you're going to offset so that the part that actually is flush is right here where that seam allowance is. Well, let's see if we can get our little pointer here. So it would be right here. So that way, when you open it up, everything will be nice and flush. So just something to think about when you're putting things together with an angle.
Now I'm putting the cuffs onto the sleeves. So the first step was to sew the cuff to the sleeve with right sides together and then I top stitched on the cuff with the seam allowance toward the cuff and then, I don't know if it'll show up on the white, I trimmed the top layer of that seam allowance just because this uh, faux leather is very thick as opposed to, you know, a fabric and the bulk can add up really fast. So I trimmed away just part of that. Then when I sew this, I'm going to fold the cuff back on itself and then have one quarter inch of the seam allowance folded up. And when I do that and sew the ends, it'll look like this. I'm just going to sew the end. So what happens then, so you can see how the, the cuff fabric is folded down with right sides together, but then the seam allowance is folded back up. Then we're just sewing the ends. And on this, again, I didn't go right to the edge, which I normally would do with fabric because it's a lot thinner. But because this is so thick, I'm trying to minimize some of the bulk in the cuff. So I only sewed this an eighth of an inch from the actual seam of the cuff. And then I trimmed the corners. And then what happens is I can fold this and turn this out and turn it. And then we end up with a nice finished edge on the edge of our cuff. This is going to be turned under. There we go. So it'll look like this. And then I will probably just hand stitch this edge to the top edge of that seam allowance just to hold it down. Normally I can go ahead and uh, top stitch that, but since I already top stitched it to hold everything in place when I attach the cuff fabric to the sleeve, I don't want to top stitch it again and have two rows of, of top stitching. But, well, actually, since I sewed that down lower, I actually could do that. But it wouldn't catch the raw edge of that. So by top, just a slip stitch and catching this top edge of fabric or Le faux leather that'll hold that down and keep the edge of that fabric underneath the cuff and it will look like this <laughs> might have to there we go because I'll stitch that into place and then what happens is when the, s the sleeve is sewn together we have a folded edge already for the edge of our sleeve so it'll look nice. So there we go, that's how we do the cuffs, but I just thought I would come and show that portion. I'm not gonna really fold that yet um, because I still need to be able to put the sleeve onto the, the body of the jacket. So that's why it's folded like this. So you can see it's folded up, then folded back down towards itself. The seam allowance is folded up. So with that seam allowance folded up, Go ahead and put it in the machine. There we go. And have a quarter inch seam allowance there. Make sure my needle will catch. There we go. And oh, I hit the wrong stitch. There we go. So we're just sewing that down. trim the corner that gets rid of some of the bulkiness in the corner there so that's what we do on the the ends and then we can flip it to right side out and our cuffs will look real nice so now we'll put this in the machine here have our seam allowance sink our needle go ahead and sew this And that one went a little farther than I wanted. But since I now have holes, I'm not going to take it out and try to redo it. That's the only drawback when you're sewing with this kind of fabric is once you put a hole in it, the hole is there to stay. 
So then we'll trim this corner. So you can't really take it apart and redo it unless you're willing to take a deeper seam. So we can fold this and flip it out. So this will be like so. Trim. There we go. And then fold this one in and flip it out. And then our cuff will look like this on the outside. So that's the edges of our cuff on our jacket sleeve. Now that I have the cuffs on the sleeves, I have the next portion of work. I went ahead and put the fronts to the back at the shoulder and top stitched the seam allowance down. And the reason I do that is just to help hold it in place because this you can't really press it as much because you'd melt this side and pressing it on the inside doesn't do a lot. <laughs> so next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the collar in by matching up the notch in the collar with the notch in the back of the neck and then I'll go ahead and clip with my clips from the center to the outside and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch it before I put on the facings and I'll use my clips to make sure that it's centered so what I'll check for is once I get it clipped in place I'm going to want to verify that I have the same amount of room on this side as I do when I get this one on for this side. So I want to make sure I've got the same amount of space on both ends. When that's verified then I'll go ahead and sew this in place. I've already notched the edges of my neckline which makes it easier to feed this through the machine um, sort of like I'm sewing a straight line rather than trying to sew around a curve and hold hold this you know in place. So because this is straighter I want this to be straighter. So I went ahead and notched that so as we straighten it these will pull apart giving that uh, freedom to kind of open up into a straight line. So I'll get the collar on then when the collar is on I will get my facing pieces and we'll match them up and I will sew up the, the front edge and then around the neckline and then I'll do the same on the other side to have that in place and then I'll actually do the seam allowance for the neck uh, for the collar as well. So that's our next pieces to put together on our little jacket. And here's the collar inserted so I'm just double checking to make sure I don't have any pleats but it all looks nice and smooth and so this time I went right at a quarter of an inch so I may end up sewing just a little bit over the top of that but now I'll take my pieces for the facing and sew up the front and then this will I'll put some snips in this as well and I'll sew this in as so. And then this edge, because I have uh, this uh, faux leather, I don't have to fold this back as I would fabric. And because that will create a lot more bulk, I'm going to go ahead and just trim this away, I think. Yeah, because I don't want to fold that because this is really thick stuff. I mean not as thick as some but it's enough to where I don't want that extra bulk on the shoulder so I'm just going to leave that as flat and uh, sew that into place and then we'll be ready to put in the sleeves and the waistband and we're getting close to having this finished. And here's what we have done so far. So the collar is all put in and I went ahead and put in the front facing so that when that collar turns out it looks nice and finished. So there's that part and then I top stitched uh, up the front and around the neckline 
and then back down the front and that helps hold this seam allowance against the back of the yoke because this is so thick if you want to line this with fabric then you can always do that but I didn't want to do it I'm just going to leave it like this because once you put this on top of other clothing a lot of times linings just add more bulk to clothing on dolls because of the scale so here we have the the bodice all done the next part will be to snip some of these curves here so that it will also lay flat and to put the sleeves in so to put in the sleeves I will snip around those edges and then put right sides together and then I will probably do a light base across the top and then I start clipping from this outside edge and then this outside edge of the armhole and then I just clip everything into place working my way towards the center that way if I do end up with any little gathers it will be at the very top of the shoulder instead of getting to the end and then having a pleat down under the arm somewhere or on the back I want to make sure if there's a little bit of extra fabric that gathers or puckers it's at the very top of the shoulder so that's why I always start at the outside edges of the sleeve and then work either to pin or clip it to the bodice uh, from the outside to the top so I'll go ahead and get those sleeves in I probably will not do any top stitching on the sleeve um, just because I like the seam allowance to go towards the sleeve and I don't want to, especially if there's any gathers I don't want to try to top stitch the top of the sleeve in case there's gathers there so I'll get the sleeves put in once the sleeves are in we'll um, go ahead and finish off the cuffs and then the sleeve will be sewn um, let's see we'll turn it there we go we'll start at one edge and go up to the arm underarm and then down the side of the jacket and I always start at about here because that way it the opening will be enough to get like a hand through there because the doll hands this would probably be big enough to allow a doll's hand to go through but when once it's finished it's going to overlap with the snap and then if you have a doll with large fingers or a widespread hand you want to be able to have that opening a little bit more so I'll probably sew like an inch from the edge of the the top edge of the cuff down is where I'll start my seam so there will be a slight opening but then it gives room to get it over a doll's hand and then it'll close with a snap so there we go that's what we'll do um, the next portion is get the sleeves in and then the last bit will be to put the waistband on and then um, put the snaps and the buttons on. There we go. And here is our finished project. So I still need to do the snaps and buttons on the front for closures as well as the snaps and buttons at the cuffs. I went ahead and did some decorative top stitching just for fun and then let's see up here we've got the way the yoke looks in the back and then it has the the three-piece back and the waistband has top stitching here as well as here and then we come around again for the, the next sleeve and then this does have um, it is a revised version to one that I've done uh, quite a while ago so that there's more room in the bust uh, just because my hue or wrong is a lot more busty than this doll and uh, so if you have a doll that's a little bit uh, more endowed than just the normal typical uh, medium bust line you should have room in this little jacket um, just if 
you were wondering about that. So then the lapels can lay open. And like I say, I just need to put the closures on the front. But there is our little jacket. It's just been so long since <laughs> I've sewn anything. Uh, mostly due to our new little babies. But then, you know, some life events we were dealing with. And, and uh, yeah, so it was good to be at the machine again. So here's the, the jacket. And I'll go ahead and... Uh, get the pattern posted on the website when I go ahead and get this video posted and uh, yeah so that way if you want to make a little short jacket for your girls you can go ahead and do it see you next time bye